It is my pleasure to welcome back Dale Earhart. Dale is a professional trainer and leadership consultant specializing in life skills development and decision making. This gentleman is also an extraordinarily accomplished pilot. Dale has performed aerobatics at air shows in the CF-18 and taught fighter weapons instructors at a Top Gun school. Whether flying jumbo jets to Australia, commanding a luxury business jet to Cairo, or flying upside down for an exuberant audience, Dale has the breadth of experience to command any aviation forum. So please, join me in welcoming Dale Earhart. Good morning. Good morning once again. So we're going from thrills to glamour. And the story starts in my basement in a woodworking shop. I became a driving instructor and you went to a school and they taught you how to be a driving instructor. So the school staff would actually have to be playing the student. I'm in the front seat and the simulation is that I had broken my leg six months earlier, I was off the line, I'm coming back, I've got lots of experience, but I'm rusty. And he's going to now bring me up to speed and he's going to ask me to do an advanced maneuver on this old voodoo. The voodoo had such a small wing, and it had to go so fast that you couldn't do a loop. You know, an aerobatic loop is where you pull up, you're on your back at the top, and you come down through the bottom. One day when we were getting ready to, uh, to welcome the Prime Minister on board, this black staff car came screaming up, and it was a special service of the RCMP. And these big chaps and this lady with his black suits and the little curly thing out the back of their ear came out, and obviously they looked so... Uh, uh, cautious and, and focused that I thought at, my t at the time that I'm glad they're the good guys because we'd be totally defenseless in the cockpit you know, at this point. But they said never down. got on the ground. You were flying the whole time. You would have to live for 1,500 years before you were involved in an aircraft crash today. So when you look at it from those perspectives, those are pretty serious numbers that show exactly how safe we are when we make that decision. To it doesn't matter what I tell you with numbers, when you see the news and you see the impact of all those horrible violence and lives so suddenly, it scares us to the bone. And as an accident investigator, I believe that that fear, that emotion, that charge drives us to become even more cognizant of how important it is that we increase the level of safety even more. So in a sense, it's the silver lining in the cloud. It's a good thing that we're emotionally impacted. Because if we weren't, we wouldn't be putting the resources, money, and effort into design, engineering, human factor studies to make flying safer. If the heat is high enough, there are circuit breakers that are all thermally activated. And this happened in Swiss Air 111 that made it so difficult for the people in the flight deck because the heat cooking on that circuit breaker panel, just like at your home, would start popping all the breakers. And they would shut off all those electrical and navigation and communication systems instantly. The other thing it would do I is went out to see the aircraft and it was unserviceable. It was broken. There was a hydraulic leak or some problem. And the only aircraft they had was a two-seater. And the guy behind the ops desk looked at me, shrugged his shoulders and said, your choice, you know, you either take the practice in the two-seater or you don't do your practice. We don't have a single. So I said, I'll take it. I need the practice. And he says, great, because I have a friend who wants to go for a ride in your back seat. And I said, you're kidding me, right? And he says, no. And I said, is he a fighter pilot? He goes, no, he's a helicopter pilot. And I went, well, at least he's a pilot. And he said, oh, he flew tutors. You know, he was an instructor. He, he'll be fine. He won't get sick. I said, I'm not, I'm not shutting down. If he gets sick, we've we, we got to do the show. He goes, no, he'll be fine. So I met this gentleman, really nice guy. We became good friends later. And, and it was so much fun, actually, taking him for this flight. Because, and I felt so odd because it felt like he was walking up like this. <laughs> and I'm staring at him, and he, he knows what I'm doing. He knows I'm messed up because he could tell by my face. But he really started to laugh was when I unstrapped, and I put my hand on that crossbar there, and I was trying to put my feet on the back of the seat of the ejection seat. I was convinced that the airplane was in a 70 degree climb and he's just killing himself because the airplane had never moved the simulator. And what we had to do, we learned from 
again, we didn't have much experience in this, but we had some incidents where people were walking into walls later, um, about an hour or two even. So we, we got the flight surgeons involved, and they actually forbid us from riding a bicycle or driving a car for 24 hours after a simulator session. So that's how much it kind of messed up the inner ear. It's another controversial airplane. And the pilots that go through the training on that are going to have the same challenges that we had.